Well, I'm just going to ask now that the Lord brings us into that union, communion together, where it's creamy, it's delicious, it's sweet, it's honey. So, Father, I thank you for everyone that's on here right now. I pray that each person would enter into sweet, creamy, delicious goodness, because that's what you are, Lord. You are creamy, delicious. It says, taste and see. It says, he is sweet to my taste. It says, honey, honey is on his tongue. <laughs> <laughs> so you know jesus and sweetness he's, he's a, he is the land flowing with milk and honey he is the promised land and we get to drink of the creamy delicious goodness anytime we want and that is the reward of the gospel that we get the gift of god and god is the creamy delicious yummy yummy god and we mustn't forget that we mustn't forget that we are love slaves and we get to feast feast ah <laughs> uh, thank you father i want to talk about i want to talk about being radically mystical again i want to build on what i shared last night and i just i should have said this yesterday i felt it so strongly i want to release you we want to release you all to be authentic to be mystical because i know many of you have been persecuted and many of you have been shut down. You've, you've, you've been embarrassed by ecstasies. You've been confused by trances. Your pastor may have said you're too heavenly. But we want to release you from that right now. Government is a bench of three, John, Ruth, and myself. We stand together as a bench of three in the courts of God. And we, we decree and declare that you are set free from the bonds of the age of, of, of a religion that has tried to contain you and tried to hide your ecstasy, tried to hide the wonder. And we say to you, you are authentic, you are genuine, you are loved, and we release you. Um, John and Ruth, do you want to join in with me on this? And I feel like we're just releasing them to be authentic and undoing yes. what's happened by the church. And we as leaders stand together, we repent. Yeah, we, we say, yeah. forgive us, forgive us, and we release you. We love you. And we celebrate your uniqueness. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we celebrate the, the giftings within you, the gold that's within you, because you're designed to be who you are yeah. originally identified with as far as hey. you know, coming from the realms of the spirit, coming from even before the foundations of the earth. You were created for Come such on. a time as this. And we release you in your identity, in your purpose, that God would just uh, use you mightily and you would not yeah. fear man. No. Quit fearing man, hey. fear God. It's about the spirit of the fear of the oh. Lord. Just go dive deep with him. And Time. we we declare that you're not just tolerated. Come on. You are celebrated. You are celebrated. You're being celebrated in heaven. And so we celebrate you as well and you are freed. We yes. as leaders, we do. We repent. I joined Justin repent. in that. Absolutely. Because there were seasons in our life when we were first coming into this and we looked at people like well, who we've become, like they had two heads or something. And so we repent for how you were treated, how we treated you. And we just celebrate you today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let it go, let it go, let it go. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Whatever nation Woo. you're in, you, yeah. are, you are part of that voice. You are yeah. the voice of many waters. It's, it's, being, it's going to be released through we you. We need your voice. We need it. We need you. Yes, you are released. Father, we ask right now that the chains are broken. Wow. and new assignments new scrolls yeah. and where people have gone to sleep that they would awaken again to ecstasy yeah. some of you have gone into spirit slumber because you were shut down yeah. lord i ask right now for a divorce and of the spirit of slumber off people yeah. that you are given permission to enjoy god to be intoxicated to have ecstasies raptures trances visions outer body experiences and more that you are authentic to the new creation and we release you and we celebrate you Yep. Thank you. For well, that. Justin, yep. just before you prayed that about the divorce, I had actually had seen this writ of divorce and mm -hmm. I wasn't sure where that was going to fit here. But then you, you prayed that. And so I saw it come down. We just agree with it. I yep. saw it was like a scroll that yep. came down. It said writ of divorce. Yep. Yes. And I see the Lord giving permission to be excited again, to have expectancy yeah. that cra we're in crazy days of goodness. Yeah. And you, yeah. you are, it's wide open for you in your home 
in your bedroom, in your workplace, in your car, the realm is open. Yeah. We decree that over you, that you be established in favor and joy and glory. And we decree a new era of, of ecstatics, yeah. a new era. Whoa, you, you remember like the Huguenots and yeah. the Jansenites yeah. and even the, the Great Awakening with Jonathan Edwards, you know, his wife, Sarah Edwards, would be so intoxicated for days at a time in trances and visions, and yet souls were gathered in. And I tell you what, the world is waiting for the trance. The world is waiting for the ecstasy, and we need a generation again that know how to drink and be filled to overflowing yeah. on the goodness That's of Papa's right. heart. Don't be the generation. Right. Let us be the generation. <laughs> yeah. I'm volunteering. You know, we, I, I, I was just saying, we got to come out of agreement with unhealthy teaching the doctrines of demon and men you know that have been established oftentimes in our hearts we've grabbed a hold of it we've got to come out of agreement with that wow. and i just speak that over your life wherever you're wherever at that you'd come at. out of agreement with it that the only only thing that everything else would crumble and the eternal truths would remain yeah, yeah. wow hey wow so let's just simmer in that for a second. Oh, just yeah. feel it. Feel it. The Lord has written in your destiny books that you would have ecstasies and raptures. You know, people think the rapture is when the Lord takes us. But Bob Jones used to say, I have raptures five times a day. <laughs> five <laughs> times a day. That, yeah. that sounds good to me. Five, how about five raptures a day? <laughs> Thank you. I think I've seen you do five raptures a day, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> If not more. But with you guys, there's so much love, this pumpkin pie, this crazy <laughs> people. What else could you want? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, I'm seeing yeah. it. So, Father, thank you right now that you crown us with yes. glory. Wow. And many of you have lost the glory. And we see God establishing you again with the crown of glory. Yeah. You are meant to be a mountain that's covered in the cloud of glory. You are a mountain that's elevated into Zion where the cloud always rests on you. Yeah. That you're not in a move of God, you are living in God. You are living in permanent supply from yes. the cloud of Kabod. Yeah. The weighty, weighty Kabod. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> and I tell you what, this is why there's been so few signs and wonders. The church has grieved Holy Spirit by the way it's treated his beloved. Yeah. You know, the way it's treated the, yeah. these precious souls, these mystics yeah. that are a gift. Yeah. They're a gift and they are a mystery yep, and right. the body needs them. We need you. We need you mystics, dear mystics. You are loved. It's good. You're weird and you're loved. Yeah. We love you. I'm weird too. So <laughs> I'm weird also. Yeah. Come on. You know, it just uh, reminds me of scripture. It says the nations will come to the light. You are the light of the world. I was thinking of Godfrey Bertel, you know, <laughs> yeah. a, 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 oh, yeah. about, you know, the, the, the light, light of the, the world, world Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ says, says that you are the light of the world. The light of the world. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Cool. <laughs> Thank you, Father. <Ooh. laughs> You're simmering, not simmering the honey. You're going to simmer, oh, man. Simmer, yeah. simmer, <laughs> simmer. Simmer, simmer. No, honey, taste and see. <laughs> this, this is all about sea in this conference. Taste the honey. Just imagine a honey pool. <laughs> and it's healing honey. Mm. It's revelatory honey. It's love honey. <laughs> <laughs> love honey someone should write a song about that <laughs> yeah love honey love honey come on Elizabeth. <laughs> love honey yeah love honey. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> Yo, the love honey <laughs> thank you lord okay this is good isn't it <sighs> it's good we could just bask in this yeah and enjoy it Thank you, Papa. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> I remember oh. your first time here, Justin. We almost had to, you kept begging us to hold on to you because you thought you were going to go somewhere. So we're. Yeah. yeah. Remember that time we had Ian Clayton and who was the other guy that was there who writes on teleportation? Um, Bruce. Bruce, Bruce Allen. Allen. I've got a photo of all of of us whacked on stage yep, I do <laughs> all too. three of you right up there <laughs> that strong wine because you, you can't get Ian whacked no. you know that is that is the heavy stuff that's heavy stuff <laughs> oh. 
All right, I suppose we should get on with doing some work. I'm going to stop talking to you, Ruth and John. Yeah, I'm going to go, I love you, but I'm going to stop talking to you. <laughs> stop we'll talking talk to, to you us. Later. <laughs> All right. Okay, go okay. It. I'm going to talk to everybody else now. So here we go. Okay, thank you, Lord. <laughs> so let's, let's go back to the beginning. I, we're going full circle. We are going full circle. History is a circle. <laughs> it's a donut. <laughs> okay. Now we can break thinking is circular. So we are coming back to the beginning. Now I just want to look at the beginning because I want you to know that you are mystical through and through. There's no way that you cannot be mystical. And I'm going to show how you were created mystical. So in the beginning, God said, you know, Bereshit, bara, Elohim, et hashamayim, et ha -heretz. And you all know that probably quite well. That in the beginning, Bereshit, he created a house within himself, a bait, and that in him, it's called the, the, the great contraction where God withdrew some of his essence, but not fully, just enough to create the cosmos within himself. And bait means in. So all of us are in God right now. So God is bigger than the cosmos and we are inside God. So in him we live, in him we move. So we can't get, go from his presence. God can't separate from us because if he separated, we wouldn't exist. So separation is an illusion. Separation is a lie. We cannot be separate from him because we're in him and we're, we're loved in him. And we were chosen in him before the foundation of the world. This is where it gets into real, heavy, incredible mysticism that God chose you in him before the foundation of the world. Whoa. So the incredible mystery here is that bait also means family. So from the very beginning, God was creating a family. He was creating a company who were in him, who were from him and are uh, included in him, defined by him in the Trinity. So when we say him, we mean, you know, Adonai, the Papa God, Ruach HaKodesh, Holy Spirit, and Yeshua HaMashiach. In them, in the dance of their love, we were birthed. We were forged out of the love wine of the Trinitarian dance. Now, theologians call this the celebrative constancy. We were born out of the celebrative constancy. In other words, God was in incredible, joyful constancy and still is. And we were birthed out of joy. Joy made you. In the same way that you see uh, in marriage that people have union to birth a baby and it's ecstasy, that's what happened in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In their ecstasy, in their joy of overflowing, they created us and went, better sheets, better Elohim, let there be light. And they released the frequency of love. And love started to create this reality that we're in. Okay, so let's keep going. So this is the mystery. The earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Now I'm going to tell you Hebraic thinking on this. Now, if this is different to what you've learned, that's okay. If you want to still stick with what you believe, I'm fine with that. But this is what the, what the rabbis teach, that the face of the deep was not the waters of the earth. It was the deep mysteries of the father's heart. So it's called the abyss of the deep, if you look into it. So the Holy Spirit was hovering over God's thoughts, hovering over God's love and intentions and the darkness of God's mysteries. And from the darkness of God's mysteries, it says the Spirit searches all things. So it's in the New Testament 2, 2 Corinthians 1, 10. The Spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. And this is what happened. Notice this. That when the earth was created, it was created different to the rest of the heavens. So God created the heavens, which are many dimensions, the multiverse. It said God created the Hashemayim and the earth. That's amazing, right? The heavens and the earth. So what is it about the earth? Well, I want to propose to you that the earth is a mystical planet and you're made from it. Your body is made for it. This is Hebraic thinking, is that the Holy Spirit hovered over the deep mysteries of the Father's heart and overshadowing the mysteries and moving, vibrating in the song, in the dance, in the celebrative constancy. The Holy Spirit began to bring out of the Father's heart this thing that was without void, that was void, which doesn't mean void. Chaos is the word tohu bohu. 
in the Hebrew, and it doesn't mean damaged, it means unformed. So some people believe the earth was damaged, and that's okay. I don't believe that. I believe that the Lord brought the earth out unformed, and Holy Spirit and wisdom, who was created to be a play partner, began to create a world that was the blurring point or the meeting point for all the heavens. In other words, the earth was very different to what it is now. It was a multidimensional, my friend, Dr. Obaniah, who's a Jewish rabbi, calls it a wormhole. It was a wormhole planet that functioned into the cosmos and the stars, and it was called the gate of heaven. In other words, all of the cosmos could see into heaven through the earth gate. Okay, now from this vibrating, incredible planet, God then created us out of it. Now, you have to bear this in mind that all the animals were spoken into being and God spoke all these other things into being. But us, we were created from the raw material, the raw matrix. Wow. Of this vibrating trans dimensional planet. Can you imagine what Earth looked like? It would have existed in multi dimensions, full of light, full of glory. And in the midst of that, God goes right into it. And he appears in creation and he gathers up this, the content of it and creates with his fingerprints. So humans, the human body and the human genome is the only thing in all of creation that bears the fingerprint of the divine. This is why it says we were made in the image. When he touched us, he imparted the resonant frequency of eternity in, into the human body. This is why the human body is going to be renewed and resurrected because the human body was never made for death. It was meant to be a visible a governmental wormhole that can go into every dimension to bring life and joy and restoration. So your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It is a multidimensional in my father's house, which is your body of many mansions. The kingdom of heavens within you and encoded in you is worlds. So your body is worlds it is not a body in fact you have celestial and terrestrial body scripture says the rabbis teach that you have many bodies each configuring to a different dimension of reality so you are like jesus and jesus appears in many bodies many forms many appearances in other words you are mystical whether you like it or not because your body was created from the face of the deep your body came from another dimension. Your body came from the inky blackness of the mysteries of the Father's love and the deep intentions of his heart. And you were encoded there. You were birthed there, and then he put his hand on you. And what did he do next? He breathed into you. We are the only species that comes from the kiss of the divine face. We are the only species who God came out of, his essence came out and then went into us. Is called the Yechida. The Yechida is the spark of the resonant frequency of the divine that animates you and gives you life. And you were given life from a fragment of him. So the Jews teach that he fragmented, he took many parts of him and he created you from him. So you were made in his image, born from God, born from him, created in him. Wow. And he took the chaos and made us and he made the earth. So earth was a multidimensional world, a gateway into the heavens, the meeting place of realms and the place where the unseen is seen in the cosmos. But get this, so are you. Everything that I've said about the earth, you are too. And Jesus came to restore what was lost. For God so loved the world. Why did he love the world? Because the world has got a purpose. It is the gate of heaven. And it has to be restored to be in the vibrational wormhole gateway that it's supposed to be. In fact, it will happen because scripture says Jerusalem will be able to synchronize back into it. This world will be so transformed that Jerusalem will be able to engage it and it will vibrate and it will be a completely different world. Okay, so listen then. So what am I saying? I am saying we have to be mystical because we were birthed from the face of the deep. We were birthed from the breath of God and your body has a capacity to be mystical. Your spirit has a capacity to be mystical. And in this generation, we are the generation that are going to merge the two back together. 
that your body is going to start to have adventures. Your body is going to be renewed. Your body is going to be put on life. And your body is going to go through dimensional gateways. Your body is going to be transfigured. Your body is included. And we are a generation that has to say, we include our body and we love our body. Our body is a part of the mystic realm of God. And we are going to re-engage it. Okay. So I'm hitting you with some heavy revies and I'm not going to let up. Here we go. So the face of the deep, Holy Spirit plunged into the deep things of God. Now I had one rapture where I went into the deep. And one of the things I saw there, I went before the earth began and the Lord raptured me in the middle of a preach. And I experienced every emotion that I could have. I couldn't even find the emotion. It, my, my emotions were like a keyboard and I, I went off the keyboard and I was feeling something in God. And what I felt was this, his longing, and I can't explain the word, for death to come out of us. For death to come out of creation and death to come out of us. And he had that longing before the world was created. I don't understand that, but I experienced it as real as this screen. It was one of those powerful raptures I've ever had. I was in the, 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 the ocean of the divine. Okay, so think about this. Your body came from there. Just look at your body for a second. Your body came from the, 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 the deep of the Father. Whew. Now, the word Adam is really interesting in Hebrew. It's the letter Aleph, which means the name of God, right? It's got the gematria of the name of God, 26. And the word Dam is blood. So in Hebrew, the name Adam means God's blood. We are the God's blood people in creation. This is why all the stars look to us. This is why multidimensional beings look to us. Uh, beings in the cosmos look to us. This is why Jesus came to earth. And this is why we are so important. And it's so vital that we now begin to live in what he did. Because he paid a high price to restore us. And it's time that we got on with the restoration of all things. The restoration of earth, plants, animals, the human body, our intellect. In one of the sessions, I'm going to talk about restoring our intellect and our body and organs, because I've got a message on that. Okay, <clears throat> so, so we are in the age where the Lord wants to restore what was lost, and that means we are in the apocalypsis. We are in the apocalypse, where he's expanded our consciousness, and what we're talking about is changing. So now some people don't want that. Some people would like to remain in a previous season, but it's not up to them. You know, God rules from Zion and God is the one that's changing the conversation. And he wants to fulfill what he started with Nicodemus, where he said, I want to talk to you about heavenly things, heavenly things. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Wow. So my heart burns with that. I can tell you, even at a young age, I wanted to know heavenly things and I wanted to walk in that realm. And I believe it's the same for you. It was written in you. Don't you know it when you were a kid? Don't you know it? It was written in you, this desire. And what we have to do now is let go of the fear. Let's not be, you know, Bill Johnson says this amazing thing. He says, let's not be satisfied with partial transformation. And I think the challenge is we are so easily satisfied when I think God wants to awaken our hunger and desire to another level. Okay. Whew. So apocalypse means the unveiling of reality. And the Lord showed me recently that what the Hindus have got, where they put a red dot on their forehead, where they're trying to engage the third eye. The Lord showed me that that's the cry in the world for the blood to come and cleanse the eye gates. But the real pattern that he wants to give us is the seven eyes, which he carries, which is a crown of light, the seven spirits where we, they rest on us, where we are not apart from them. And this is the dimension he wants to take this generation into. It's so far beyond what we're used to that one of the challenges, you have to let yourself die to who you were. Because who you were right now is passing away, but we're being renewed into something more. And we have to give ourselves permission to grow, permission to change, and permission to be different because you will not be the same as you've been. The things you've done are going to change. 
And I'm going to share some of them now, some of the things that are happening to me. I'm going to just open my life to you, be vulnerable to you. Now, part of me thinks I shouldn't share my stories because some preachers have even told me, never share your own stories because that's immodest. But that's not immodest. That's my testimony. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And, you know, these gateway blockers that try and say, don't shine, don't be supernatural. We have to get rid of that punisher, take it to the courts of heaven and say, Lord, deliver me from the punisher that tries to hide how glorious we are. Because the thing is, we have to become glorious. We cannot transform the world unless we start to become glorious. Now, if you hung out with me enough, you will see. Wow. There are a lot of strange things that happen around me, but for me, it's normal. It doesn't feel unnatural. It just feels natural. Okay, John, it says that I've got 10 minutes until to finish. Is that correct? Yeah, let's, uh, let's just continue to go whenever you're feeling like, yeah, let's give you another 20 minutes or so. Does that okay. work? Are people good for another 20 minutes of, of me uh, revelating and sharing this stuff? Yeah. Yeah, we're- I think we're good. Okay. So we have to start to be willing to talk about reality because what we talk about will attract. And, you know, there are many conversations I've wanted to have in the church and I haven't. You know, there are things that the Lord wants to teach you, for example, how to change the trading platforms in your DNA and untether from beings that have engaged you in the night or in your dreams. He wants to teach you how to engage the gateways of your life so that he sits in the gates and floods them with light. He wants to teach you how to have a relationship with him where you, you hear him like a flow every day, where you're no longer seeking the profit for the word of the Lord. You walk with the Lord. He wants to teach you what's in the cosmos, what's in the stars, because he didn't stop creating with earth. And all of that's part of our inheritance. And some people try and shut that conversation down and say, oh, you know, it's not really there. Let's pretend it's not there. Let's just concentrate on the earth. But the thing is, God said, set your mind on things above. And he gave permission to you to be cosmic. And, you know, we cannot remain bound to the earth anymore. The the problem with the age we've been in is bound us to the earth and the systems of the earth. But Isaiah said, set your mind on things above, then look upon the earth. So we should go above the timeline, above the earth, above the nations, and and look at it from above. And then you see how beautiful it is and how easily it can be transformed. Okay, I'm going to keep going for 20 minutes. You guys ready? So this is what the rabbis teach. The, and I mentioned it yesterday, the physical world which we live, the objectively observed universe. Now think about this, there's two trillion galaxies. So it's pretty big, right? We can't even think of that number. Is only part of an inconceivable vast system of worlds. Some people call it multiverse, some people call it multi-dimensions. Most of these worlds are spiritual in their essence. Listen to what I just said. Even with science, we can't see 95% of the galaxy because it's called black matter or dark matter or dark energy. It's the same with your DNA. We don't understand 95% of it. It's because it's other worlds and other dimensions. And humans will never be able to fulfill their mandate until we become multidimensional. That's what they tried to do in Babel. With the Tower of Babel, they said, let us build a name for ourselves in the heavens. So they were building a technological gate, and the Lord said they will be able to do it if we don't stop them. So think about that. The technology was so advanced that they were doing multidimensional technology. Then they, they got separated into different languages and cultures. But we're in the day where the Lord wants to restore what was lost. He wants to restore the language that we have as one species on earth. He wants to restore cardiognosis where we talk heart to heart. He wants to restore our ability to engage the cosmos, which is the true desire that all creation's grown in for the revealing of the sons of God. Why am I talking about this? Because God can give you assignments anywhere he wants to give you assignments. According to your faith, let it be done to you. Okay, so many of you know the testimony of Howard Storm. He was an atheist who died when he wrote a book called My Descent to Death, and he went down into blackness, into Hades, 
and cried out for Yeshua. And Yeshua came as a being of light and scooped him up. He was an atheist before this happened and took him up into the heavens. And he's a wonderful story. He became a Baptist pastor, served faithfully. He's retired now. Anyway, when he was taken up into the heavens during his death experience, he said this, I asked them if there were other worlds. They said, yes, the universe is full of other worlds. And there are other dimensions of other physical universes, and those are filled with other worlds. There are, there are worlds in our physical universe. There are unlimited habitable worlds with beings. Think about that. Unlimited habitable worlds with beings. And the Bible says, go into all the cosmos and preach to every creature. Jesus really made it broad, the gospel. <laughs> anyway, if, that's, if you're not comfortable with it, that's okay. Listen, let me continue. So there are unlimited habitable worlds of beings, and there are other dimensions with other worlds in them beyond counting without number. Okay. So in Hebraic thinking, right now, there are, there are layers all in this space of consciousness. Now, the, the lower levels of these worlds in the Jewish tradition of rabbis and mysticism is called Kalipa. And this is the dark realm where we would call fallen angels existing. There are worlds within it, right? Then above that is the world of action. We live in what they call the world of action. It's made up of the unseen and the seen, and it's where the action of humanity shapes what goes on above and below. So we live in the world of action and is seen and unseen. Because remember, some humans live in the unseen. Elijah, Enoch, there's more going on than the seen. And if you want to know what they're doing, you have to learn to go into the unseen. You cannot remain in the scene, okay? You're not supposed to. Remember I said you came from the face of the deep. You were birthed from the unseen. Your body's made from the unseen. The, 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 the Yechida inside you is from the unseen. And you are made for the unseen, okay? And the scene. And that doesn't diminish loving babies, having a food, that doesn't diminish that. It just means that the, 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 the picture is a lot bigger. And I want to see more of the picture, don't you? I wish I could see you so I could have a thumbs up. The next layer above us, the world of action, so above the cosmos now, or interfacing with the two trillion galaxies, is the world of formation. Now, this is a dimension full of worlds that are all angelic. This structure is called the realm of angels and it's the realm of formation. In the lower levels, there are emanations that we create that are angelic, but in the higher dimensions, there are what we call angelic beings. Now I've met many different types and I recently had my most incredible encounter with angels where I was taken into a realm where they were all creatures. And I was so honored that the Lord did this for me. It was a cry of my heart probably for 10 years. And it happened two weeks ago. I was ascending and the Lord caught me up. And I saw a being, I saw one being that looked like eyes. If you imagine a grapes, it looked like a bunch of grapes that were eyes. I saw another being that looked like Pegasus with wings. And I saw beings that looked like rainbows. And I saw beings that looked like stars. And I saw beings that looked like shapes and they were all in this realm. And when I went into the realm, this was the amazing thing. The realm illuminated. Somehow my very presence there activated them. And I saw them all fly off with, 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 with destiny scrolls from Yahweh. So somehow that mansion is in me. And this is what you need to understand. You have a mansion within you with these worlds. You have a mansion within you to meet the seven spirits. You have a mansion within you of the courts. You have a mansion of Eden. All of these dimensions are in you. And as you engage them, light comes on. And the mystery that was hidden in the face of the deep becomes revealed. And it activates because you bring life wherever you go. That's the role of humanity. Wherever we go, the river flows because the river flows through the belly or the human heart. The four chambers is the four rivers of Eden. Okay. Now, this realm, this angelic, the angelic worlds is fascinating. And I've got a heart for those worlds. I love angels because the Lord love angel, loves angels. And you know, very few uh, new creation people go there. But there is an invitation to learn about the tribes, cultures, languages, and, and, and architecture of those worlds. And Enoch went there. In fact, Enoch saw it all and went out of there and went beyond it. 
The next level above that is called the throne, which is the realm of, of creation, the throne room. And some of you may have had throne room experiences. This is the place of ultimate rulership and ultimate government. So that's the place where heaven rules and the Lord manifests himself in a form that can be seen. But it's a shadow of who he is because the heavens of heavens can't contain God. But even the shadow is glorious and, and beyond anything. And he sits there and invites us into the throne room. Now, I know very few people that have been to the throne room. The, I mean, there are thrones under it. I'm talking about the throne room. But God is hungry for there to be a throne room generation. And Sean Boltz wrote a book called The Throne Room Generation. And I know that John Paul Jackson's appearing from that realm. And he appeared to Paul Keith Davis. And he said, the Lord is looking for messengers of his face or oracles of his face. So there's an invitation going out to who wants to be the throne room company, who wants to go above the caliph, calipha, the action formation into the realm of creation the realm where things are, are, are called forth and you see the divine. Okay. Now, believe it or not, there's, there are many worlds within the throne. So every layer has worlds. Now they say 360 worlds, but it's just a symbolic number, but there are worlds. And I've seen many worlds in my ascensions. Now get this. The next place I'm going to tell you about is the place that I've gone the most. And it's called the, the world of emanation. Now, the world of emanation is where the Trinity exists. So it's not the angels. It's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Do you know this? This is why you are the most mystical species in the world. Colossians 3 says this. The secret of your life is you are wrapped up in Christ, in God. In other words, we are in the dimension. I call it the dimension of the one. Now, I was going there for many, many years, not knowing if it was okay. I would go above the heavens and just be in God, the all in all. All of his thoughts were there. Everything that exists was there in his heart. And I would be in the symphony of love and I'd get infused knowledge. I wouldn't get visions because it was just flooding me with his essence. And, you know, for many years, I didn't know if this was an okay place until one time I was talking to Nancy Cohen. I said, Nancy, do you go into the place called the one? And she, her face lit up and she was straight away, honey, I go there all the time. And, uh, you know, and I felt so relieved because, but now I'm reading Hebraic rabbis. Do you know that the Jews knew this? And I don't know what happened when we dishonored the Jews and then dishonored the Catholic mystics. We keep forgetting stuff that we should know. All the stuff I've taught you in this session has been taught for hundreds of years. All of it. It's all been taught. And, you know, it's time for us to remember who we are. Okay, I'm going to land it there. I didn't finish my, my thing, but I just will end with a couple of quotes. The rabbis teach for humanity, everything that I've said is natural. They do not consider this supernatural. They believe this is just natural, that we're made for this. We are the ecclesia. We are the bride. We are the government of God. Now, you might seem that this seems too magical. What won't seem magical in the past will over time become common and normal we are called to redefine normal that's a quote from me <laughs> i'm quoting myself because it's a good quote so we're called to redefine not normal now i'll finish with this nelson mandela said this it always seems impossible until it's done so i give you permission now right now as i'm landing this to journey this out you don't have to listen to me ask yeshua engage his heart and say lord speak to me about heavenly things and show me a brand new world and i've quoted this before but i love that disney song from aladdin it says let me open your eyes show you wonder by wonder you know take you on a magic carpet ride into a whole new world a whole fantastic point of view no one to sell to, no one to tell you no or tell you that you're only dreaming a whole new world. That is the invitation of the mystic realm. And I just pray now that, Father, that these people who are on this call today were called to be on this call because it's written in your DNA. You know it, you felt it, you've craved it, you've dreamed it. And I pray right now for incredible acceleration in your life. I pray that 2020 vision is yours. I pray just like John and Ruth have framed up that you'd have access unlimited 
access unlimited in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Wow. Great session, Justin. Uh, thank you for uh, quoting yourself too. That was, that was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> but I, 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 you know, I couldn't agree more. I think that there's a place where we are, you know, rising to the occasion. God is is really, uh, you know, putting his finger on people of intimacy and uh, asking them to go go deeper. And I, I think the main thing is is that there are no there are no secrets in the secret place. That's the thing is that in that secret place, in that hidden place that those that are really searching will absolutely hear the voice of God. They will hear the voice of Yahweh and, uh, and he'll bring clarity and truth uh, to your scroll so that you can, uh, you can have your scroll defined and, and have, it, have it clear and that, uh, that uh, you'll, um, you'll hear along the way. It's not even, a, you'll, you'll hear in, it in the end, but well done. Well done. You'll hear from, from Papa uh, in the days ahead as you journey with him. So we just want to, uh, we're here to awaken your spirit to these things so that you can continue to uh, dive into him. Um, my, my wife is gone again, Justin. I don't know if she, is she in Wales? <laughs> <laughs> no, she's not. <laughs> All right. Thanks for tuning in uh, and uh, enjoying this session together.